For years, the Netherlands maintained a low-profile yet dependable role in Europe's technology landscape, largely untouched by global power struggles. That calm ended abruptly when the country was drawn into a geopolitical confrontation it never sought. Strong pressure from the United States pushed Dutch authorities to impose tighter restrictions on Nexperia, a semiconductor company backed by Chinese capital that was once praised as evidence that global cooperation in advanced technology was still possible. That idea has since collapsed. The United States now views the company as a strategic risk, China condemns the Dutch response as deliberate economic harm, and as the Netherlands aligns more closely with Washington, Beijing has begun to retaliate by limiting access to critical materials, reassessing trade relationships, and unsettling Europe's broader economic confidence. What started as a standard regulatory review has escalated into an international dispute focused on a small Dutch town hosting one of Nexperia's key facilities a place once expected to help propel Europe's technological future, but now caught in the crossfire of global politics. Nexperia's rise was never meant to trigger political alarm bells. Born from Philips's former semiconductor arm, the company grew steadily with Chinese investment and came to represent the belief that Europe and Asia could jointly advance critical technologies. That belief began to unravel after Wingtech, a major Chinese chip manufacturer, finalized its takeover in 2019. At the time, European governments showed little concern. Capital was scarce. China was investing aggressively worldwide. And Nexperia continued producing low-cost but vital chips used in everyday technologies, from household electronics to electric vehicles. The situation only shifted when Washington's attitude hardened. As rivalry between the US and China intensified, American officials quietly cautioned European leaders that allowing Chinese ownership of sensitive technology carried long-term risks. The Biden administration, building on policies introduced during the Trump era, urged Dutch policymakers to adopt a stricter approach toward Nexperia. Looming in the background was ASML, the Netherlands' most valuable technology company, which became an unspoken bargaining chip. U.S. signals made it clear that ASML's ability to sell its advanced equipment abroad depended on political alignment, implying that resistance could jeopardize the country's most important industrial asset. Under this mounting pressure, Dutch regulators opened a far-reaching investigation into Nexperia, curbing its ability to expand and raising the possibility of forced divestments. Officials argued that some of the company's products were used in strategically sensitive areas, including electric vehicle infrastructure and defense-related systems, making foreign ownership a national security concern. Beijing rejected these claims outright, viewing them as a continuation of Washington's broader effort to contain China's technological rise. Chinese state media framed the Dutch decision as evidence that Europe lacked the independence to protect its own economic interests. Inside the Netherlands, Nexperia's leadership warned that jobs and future investment were at risk. Chinese investors halted planned funding, and domestic business groups accused their government of undermining national prosperity to satisfy U.S. strategic demands. Ordinary citizens were left questioning why their country's technological progress was being slowed by a power struggle between two external superpowers. This development was part of a larger pattern. In 2022, the United Kingdom had already compelled Nexperia to sell its wafer facility in Newport on similar security grounds, reinforcing the impression that Europe was increasingly adopting a US-driven approach aimed at removing Chinese ownership from critical industries, even when it meant economic losses. The contradiction was striking. A country long associated with free trade and open markets was now restricting foreign investment due to external pressure. A company once seen as a bridge between East and West had become a symbol of Europe's dilemma, torn between economic pragmatism and political loyalty. China's response left little room for doubt. If Europe chose distance, Beijing would respond in kind, and it did so swiftly. A sequence of actions followed, officially framed as matters of fairness and national respect, but clearly shaped by geopolitical calculation. The first blow targeted Europe's industrial backbone by restricting exports of gallium and germanium. Materials essential for semiconductors, electric vehicles, and advanced defense technologies. Because China controls the majority of global supply, European manufacturers immediately faced higher cost and material shortages. Financial pressure soon followed as Chinese banks and investment funds quietly scaled back their involvement in European technology ventures, delaying or canceling partnerships with Dutch startups. The underlying message was clear. Europe could not shut out Chinese companies while expecting unrestricted access to China's economy. Chinese media then shifted focus to ASML, 
accusing the company of sacrificing long-standing relationships with China to comply with U.S. demands. While reports surfaced that Beijing was considering limits on ASML's service operations within China, a serious threat given how much revenue the company generates there. On the diplomatic front, China added another layer of pressure by engaging France and Germany in high-level economic discussions while deliberately excluding the Netherlands, signaling that nations willing to pursue an independent path would be rewarded. Staying too closely aligned with Washington came at a price, and the Netherlands felt the impact almost right away. Commercial ties with China weakened, confidence among semiconductor investors dropped, and voices within the country began warning that what had been promoted as risk management was quietly turning into the erosion of a key industrial foundation. China capitalized on the situation, portraying it as evidence that Europe lacked real sovereignty and was being drawn into a power struggle that did not originate from its own interests. What appeared at first to be a dispute involving Nexperia soon revealed itself as only the beginning. The true strain focused on ASML, the sole company on the planet able to manufacture the extreme ultraviolet machines required to produce the most advanced semiconductors. Any serious retaliation by China against ASML would not be limited to a single Dutch corporation. It would send shockwaves throughout Europe's entire technology sector. From NVIDIA's graphics processors to the chips inside Apple products, modern computing relies on a single, highly specialized technological chain, placing ASML in the paradoxical position of being both indispensable and exposed in the global contest for chip supremacy. For years, the United States had urged Dutch authorities to curb ASML's dealings with China. That pressure intensified in 2019 when the Trump administration blocked the shipment of an EUV system to SMIC, China's leading chip manufacturer. This decision set a precedent, paving the way for wider controls. Under the Biden administration, demands escalated further, with Washington insisting that even older DUV machines, still crucial to China's manufacturing and automotive industries, be restricted. Yielding to sustained American pressure, the Netherlands introduced new export regulations in early 2024 that not only halted future deliveries, but also prevented ASML from maintaining or upgrading equipment already installed in China. Beijing responded forcefully, condemning the move as technological coercion and accusing the Dutch government of sacrificing independence to satisfy U.S. demands. ASML found itself caught in the middle forced to choose between compliance with Washington and protecting one of its most important markets. The consequences were immediate. ASML's stock price dipped, Chinese customers delayed or canceled orders, and analysts warned that enormous future revenues were now in jeopardy. Simultaneously, China doubled down on building domestic alternatives, channeling resources into companies such as Huawei-linked initiatives and local equipment makers, accelerating efforts to develop lithography systems, that could eventually rival ASML's capabilities. Within Europe, the political divide sharpened. Supporters of close alignment with the United States argued that security concerns justified the economic cost, while economists and industry leaders warned that Europe was undermining its own technological strength. One Dutch politician bluntly summarized the concern, saying the country was cutting itself off from the world's fastest growing market and calling it a path to economic self-destruction. ASML's chief executive attempted to maintain a neutral stance, repeatedly emphasizing that global technology networks are too deeply interconnected to be dismantled without serious damage. In practice, however, the company's flexibility kept shrinking. Each shipment required political approval, and even routine service visits were treated as sensitive diplomatic matters. ASML's struggle reflected a larger European dilemma, balancing a long-standing alliance with the United States against deep economic ties to China. As the fallout from the Nexperia case expanded and export controls tightened, the broader consequences became harder to ignore. What had been framed as a defensive strategy increasingly looked like deliberate self-inflicted harm. The Netherlands, once viewed as a cornerstone of European innovation, began to appear uncertain and isolated, raising doubts among international investors. Business leaders across Europe quietly questioned whether the continent had surrendered control over its economic future to American priorities. Germany, France, and Italy observed with growing concern as Dutch chip exports declined, supply chains weakened, production slowed, and highly skilled engineers sought better opportunities in Asia and North America. Domestically, criticism intensified. Opposition parties accused the government of abandoning national decision-making in exchange for U.S. approval, while protests broke out in cities like Eindhoven and Nijmegen, 
as employees at Nexperia and ASML feared job losses. One worker summed up the frustration, saying globalization had promised growth, but now felt like punishment for trading with the wrong partner. The economic strain worsened. Dutch exports to China dropped sharply within a year, while imports increased, expanding the trade imbalance. China responded by shifting major contracts for machinery and electric vehicles to countries such as South Korea and Malaysia, deliberately reducing its exposure to European suppliers. Yet the most profound change was not financial, but psychological. Across the European Union, confidence in Europe's ability to chart its own course began to fade. American influence increasingly extended beyond military cooperation into economic policymaking, and internal EU assessments quietly acknowledged that the idea of strategic autonomy had become largely symbolic. China, meanwhile, moved swiftly. What Washington described as containment, Beijing treated as a challenge to overcome. Each restriction and sanction became fuel for faster innovation in areas ranging from artificial intelligence chips and batteries to lithography and advanced materials. Attempts to slow China's progress may have had the opposite effect, accelerating the rise of a powerful long-term rival. As Europe hesitated, China pushed forward, expanding trade systems based on the yuan, investing heavily across Asia and Africa, and building economic structures less dependent on Western influence. For the Netherlands, the conflicts surrounding Nexperia and ASML are likely to be remembered as a decisive moment, revealing how fragile alliances can become when economic pressure intensifies. The message is unmistakable. In today's world, true influence depends on economic self-determination. China is actively securing its future, while Europe risks seeing its global standing gradually diminish.